Ute Indians, the Nooch as they're called uh, among themselves, were in this area and it was a breadbasket for them. So they were able to take advantage of all the resources in this area, including the hot springs that they used uh, just like we do today. And they were uh, smart enough to know how to get in and out of the area and so their trails became then the way of transportation of the future of how to get into Glenwood Springs from the flat top. Glenwood was uh, incorporated in 1884-1885. Uh, the first settlers were um, 18, I think, 79. So there were, you know, a lot of interest in the area and realization that uh, money could be made from bringing people here to enjoy and use the hot springs. The man that uh, claimed the land where the hot springs now is. His name was James Landis, and he was the first white settler here in Glenwood Springs. And he claimed that land, and he sold it to Isaac Cooper for $1,500. And Isaac Cooper was instrumental in developing the hot springs. Walter Devereaux and Isaac Cooper worked together to develop the area. Walter Devereaux was a man who had some vision about what this particular spot in the Roaring Fork Valley could become. And he had the money as a, a pretty uh, wealthy mining engineer to be able to put that money uh, out and, and develop the hot springs, uh, put in the Hotel Colorado. And so I think those things are really important because that history has a lot of meaning. It's carried through now to the day. And he had a profound influence on Glenwood Springs and sort of set the path for the future. One thing about the hot springs that a lot of people don't know is that um, they used to bottle and sell that water and they called it Yampa water. And they would sell it because it cured a multitude of diseases, including baldness. A lot of people used the hot springs for their health. There were all sorts of uh, uh, ideas about how the minerals would help you. Today people come here for the same reason, to relax, so for their health. Glenwood Hot Springs is a complete resort. It initially started as a hot springs pool back in 1888 when it was originally established. And as uh, many more people began to come here and soak and enjoy the hot springs, it evolved into a complete resort. Mother Nature gave us a fantastic source of geothermal springs. Uh, it was turned into a hot springs pool as it was funneled and channeled into a soaking ability for everyone to come and enjoy. The concrete pool is the main primary and the largest hot springs pool in the United States, if not the world. Uh, we added the therapy pool to the end of it uh, many years ago, so we have a couple of different degrees of soaking temperatures available. The hot springs has 15 minerals in the water. We have uh, key minerals such as sulfur, magnesium. Uh, sulfur is essential for collagen production of the skin. It's great for the hair and nails. Um, you ingest that by soaking it dermally. Your skin will absorb these as well as inhalation of the steam off the water. So magnesium as well, lithium's also in there. It's a very relaxing component for um, mental and physical well-being. We have quite a few clients that uh, come into the Aquatic Club consistently, come into the spa consistently, that have had all kinds of ailments uh, throughout their lives. We have a couple of clients that uh, have come in wheelchair bound, started a really good regimen on soaking, and good hydrotherapy and physical therapy. My name's George Scherer and I've been a member here at the club for oh, almost 20 years now. I had a major spinal cord injury uh, almost two years ago. It's devastating to think that your mobility is just cut out from underneath you and whether or not you're going to be able to walk again. So not only have George and I worked in the athletic club on uh, doing floor exercises and on some of the um, fitness equipment and the machines. We also have incorporated the Bounteology, which is basically uh, aquatic therapy and really allows the movement to start again. I feel blessed that I've gone from a hospital bed to being able to walk on my own, come here on my own, climb stairs, get into the pool, exercise, and keep moving forward. 
This is the Yampa Spa and Vapor Caves. We've been here in continuous operation for 124 years. Actually one of the oldest uh, spas in the country and we're really unique because we are the only natural vapor caves in the Northern Hemisphere. Well, the history of the caves really goes back about 800 years. The uh, Ute elders we've talked with um, tell us that the uh, Utes and the Northern Arapahoes, the Apaches, all fought battles for control of these caves. Not actually this cave. The original Indian cave is on the south side of the river. Uh, it was a cavern about 20 by 30 feet with an opening in the top where they would lower sick or people for ceremony into the caves. Cave number two is directly across the river from us. The uh, cave was made famous by Doc Holliday, who uh, came here for his lung problem. We're actually cave number three. Devereaux excavated these caves in 1892. Uh, they weren't actually excavated to get into the caves. You had to crawl on your belly through a tiny opening. The original Indian cave was known for healing. Yampa means big medicine. Well, I really believe it was more healing than ceremony. Glenwood was a really unique vacation spot at the turn of the century. Caves were famous with everybody that came here from Molly Brown, President Roosevelt visited, Al Capone visited. The resource has always been there. The steam comes out of the uh, mountain no matter what we do. Uh, we're required by law to take that water and put it right back into the river the same way it came out of the mountain, and we do. The Yampa Caves are the history of the community. When people came here, they came here and stopped here on their travels to use the steam caves and to soak in the hot water. We have many, many people that come here year after year because they get a lot of relief from arthritis, just from general tension in their body. And they feel the difference when they leave, so they come back. This spring in itself was developed in 1896 by the local sheriff. He bought the land, started using the spring, and, and built uh, the facility up. So this was the, uh, the commoner's hot springs. One of the springs was called Hobo Springs, so it was from the, the, tr the railroad hobos that would uh, come in. But later on in the 60s, it kind of went in disrepair, and eventually in the 90s, they just bulldozed the property, and it just sat here vacant until we opened it up last year. The thing about this spring that makes this a little different than the other hot springs is we have a high concentration of iron, which is very relaxing and uh, rejuvenating. So, but we have another 27 minerals, I believe, in our pools, and uh, they're all natural. And the cool thing is that this water comes from the ground. Within five minutes, it goes right into the pool. So we don't treat it, we don't put any chemicals in it, we don't add any fresh water. People are soaking in stuff that's come right from the earth. We let people soak in the water, then we take more of the heat out to utilize throughout the property before we uh, put the water in the river. The history of Glenwood Springs is something we're proud of trying to enlighten people with. And so, you know, it's our job to try to bring that story alive. The hot springs um, in Glenwood, that is our biggest industry here. It draws people from all over. It's a wonderful place. Mm -hmm.